بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله Praise be to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Praise be to him for his guidance and his mercy to all of us. May God bless the Prophet Muhammad and his companions and his family and those who followed him until the day, until the last day. Dear brothers and sisters, today is Friday. It is the 9th of Jumad al-Ula of 1439 of the Hijra. And it is January of 26 of Milad. 2018. On this blessed day in the week, we are advised to read the surah, the 18th surah of the Quran called Suratul Kahf, or the chapter of Kay. This surah is in the middle of the Quran. It is as if this surah connects the beginning and the end of the Quran. But also it is symbolic because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the surah Kahf is the, like a light between the heaven and the earth. And therefore, we are advised to read the surah because if we read the surah and concentrate and understand what is the context of it, Prophet Muhammad said that you will be free from your sins between Friday, last Friday, and today's Friday. Now, this is a long surah, and there are four basic and four main kissas or narratives or stories you all of you all know i suppose the story of the young man who was expelled from the city to live in the cave seven sleepers there is a story of two men one is grateful one is not grateful and there is a story of between the dialogue between Musa alayhi salam and Khidr, whereby Khidr taught Musa alayhi salam that he should be patient and that there is always somewhere more knowledge than you have. And the, finally, we have this story of the more powerful man on the earth at the time who was trying to conquer the world from the east to the west. He's called, he, he is called Zulkarnain. And then the ending of the surah is very interesting where God tells us, you know, whatever you say, your words don't, are not very heavy because God's words are so many and so heavy that if, as you see the ocean, how big it is, if this ocean is ink, the ocean will, will be whispering, but the ink by which God is telling us his words will not whispering at all. So it will never 
you will never be fed up with what God is saying to you. Now, I read today Ahl al-Kaf and prepared this khutbah for you. In this, and uh, out of what I read today, because I feel whenever I read Surah Al-Kaf, it is as if I read it for the, for the first time. Even though I read it so many times. But what, whenever I read Surah Al-Kaf, I feel that I am discovering like, like I did not read it before. Where this was before when I was reading because it is always inspiring. So for today, I have two messages for you from this surah and for the part of the first story. The one is this basic, this very small ayah, which is, it is told to the prophet, but is, it, this ayah is to us today. When God subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the prophet, فَلَأَلَّكَ بَاخِئٌ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ أَعْثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَادِ الْحَدِيثِ يَسَفَىٰ You are prophet, but God knows. He, he has told him to tell to the people, إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِسْلُكُمْ يُوحَىٰ إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ I am like you, my brothers. I am prophet. I am only prophet. The only difference that God is giving me wisdom to, to carry and to tell you what you have to do on this planet, on this, in this life. I am not God. You, don't, you should not worship me. I am not sane. I am like you, Bashar. Isn't that beautiful? And then, of course, as a human being, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was disappointed because when these two men whom the mushrik sent to the Medina to ask the rabbis about whether he is prophet or not, and then the rabbis told this man, go back to Mecca and ask him these three questions about the youth, seven sleepers, Ask them about Zulkarnain and ask them about the Ruh. What is the, what is the soul? And then Prophet Muhammad said, I'll tell you tomorrow. But the revelation was not coming. And he was disappointed. Fifteen days he was waiting. And then Subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him, Huh, Prophet, maybe you are disappointed. You are disappointed because they don't believe what you tell them. But you know why? Because all this beauty of this planet, this is only temptation for them. So don't be like them. You have to be always. Even in difficulty, you have to be able to carry it out. How? And then, subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, Don't overpass your eye over those who are calling upon God day and night. You have to be with them. Kulil haq. Kulil haq. Faman yasha an liyu'min, faman sha'a liyakfur. Your duty, your is to say the truth and let them believe or not to believe. This is very interesting. This, this particular uh, point of the Quran here is we have in other verses when we said that God خلق الإنسان فمنهم من كفر ومنهم من آمن but here God is telling to the prophet قل الحق فمن شاء ليؤمن ومن شاء ليكفر what it means it means you know you have to tell the truth 
But let them believe. Let the one who wants to believe, believe. But let the one who doesn't want to believe, let him disbelieve. Isn't that, is it, that, that beautiful for us? What, what is the message? And finally, and the third message that I would like to share with you today is that when subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the prophet, وَلَا تَكُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ وَاذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتَ فَقُلْ عَسَى أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي رَبِّي لِأَكْرَبَ مِنْهُ رَشَدًا And the final is that, you know, when you were disappointed, when you thought that, that God subhanahu has left you, when they were spreading rumors in Mecca that the Prophet, that Muhammad is, uh, uh, was left, was forgotten by God and by jinn and everything, you know why this happened? It happened because when you said, I'll tell you tomorrow, you didn't say, inshallah, if God is willing. So from now on, you have to be careful about it. So when you want to do something, and you want to promise something, and you want to do something, you have to say, inshallah. But, dear brothers and sisters, here we have one problem as Muslims. Across the Muslim ummah, we use this word, inshallah, inshallah, even don't, don't, don't thinking about it. So instead of making sure that something will happen when you say inshallah some people think when you say inshallah that means there is nothing to it that's the paradox we live so i heard some muslims say that when somebody tells him because they are making some trade deal or something if he says inshallah that means that will not happen because he has the excuse tomorrow to say, I wanted, but God didn't want it. Now, this is the tricky thing that we have to, to see how to keep, how to keep these strong beliefs that we have, like inshallah, to be to the point and to be truthful and to be honest and to carry the amana and to keep your promise. This is how you are going to be a Muslim. Because you remember probably this hadith, which is very long. It is from Abu Sa'id al-Khudari. He said that oh, they were in the time of Asr, and the sun was about to set up. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said in a khutbah, you know, at dunya hulwatun wa khadiratun. The dunya, the, or this world, is very sweet and it is very green. But the, this is very long hadith, which some say that this is not altogether sahih. But the, the, the idea, I think, is very interesting. When it is said that it is said that Bani Adam khuliku tabaqat shatta fi tabaqat shatta the human beings the sons of Adam were created in a different stages so there are some yuladu mu'minan wa yahya mu'minan wa yamutu mu'minan minhum yuladu kafiran wa yahya kafiran wa yamutu kafiran there are some people who are born faithful and they live like faithful and they die faithful. There are some people who are born infidel, they live infidel and they die infidel. But, listen to this, there are some people who are born mu'min, who live mu'min and they die kafir, infidel. That's the puzzle. That's what's frightened me all the time when I think of, me, of you and me, how we are going to end. 
And there are people, it is said, who are born kafir, who live kafir, and, but die as mu'min. That's very interesting. This is how we are Muslims here living in Europe. How can we solve this puzzle that is all around about us? It is should what we should do. No, you should take care of yourself first before you take care of others. Because you know when you are in the aeroplane, what they tell you, take care of yourself and then take care of your child, right? So you have to take yourself first, how you behave, and then look what the other people are doing. Dear brothers and sisters, I say this and I ask God to forgive you and to forgive me. May God bless you. Ala inna ahsana kalam wa ablaqan nizam kalam Allah fi kitab al-kareem illa dina inda Allah al-Islam. Dear brothers and sisters, the best khutbah that one can say is in one word, and I will repeat it, ittaqullah. Beware of God. Ittaqullah means not only to, be, to have fear before God, but also to prevent yourself from the sin, because it is from the Arabic root waqa yaqi waqayatun, which means prevention is better than healing. Al ilaju khairun, al waqayatu khairun min al ilaj. This is what said in Arabic. So please be aware of God's presence and be aware of that we live a short life here and that we will come before God and we will answer to him who, what we have do, been doing, what we have been saying and how we have been behaving. So may God help you to succeed in your examination. Amen. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, kiamalin, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabina Muhammadi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ta'azimah wa takhriman likhbah khamati shani sharifi safiyyi. Faqala azza wa jalla min qa'il la mukhbina wa amira. Inna Allah wa malakatahu yusallun ala nabiyya ayahu al-ladhin amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadi wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو اسمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي فيها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم إنا نسألك من النعمة تمامها ومن العصمة دوامها ومن الرحمة شمولها ومن العيش يرغده ومن العمر أسعده ومن الإحسان يتمه ومن الأنعام عمه اللهم كن لنا ولا تكن علينا اللهم استر سجال عفك على ذنوبنا اللهم اكن بلا بالسعادة يا جالنا وطب زيد بالسعادة يا ربنا اللهم خفف عنا ثقل الأوزار وارزقنا عيشة الأبرار واقفنا واصرف عنا شر الأشرار اللهم اعتق رقابنا ورقاب آبائنا ومهاتنا وإخواننا وخواتنا من النار يا رحمن ويا رحيم ويا ستار ويا عليم ويا جبار اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا واجعل أهله من السالمين إنك أنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم بارك لنا هذا اليوم 
كما باركت للأولياء والأتقياء يا رب يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة